so on this uncharacteristically balmy day at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey, Giant Stadium. What a wonderful place to watch a football game. And today you couldn't ask for better weather conditions. The Giants will receive the opening kickoff. Mike Wansford. Boy, don't you know he is very happy about today being as warm and as pleasant as it is because he kicks barefooted. He didn't always do that. He just sort of discovered it. Megan and Ingram back deep for the Giants, and we're about set to go. The winner will play the 49ers. Sims will direct the giant offense you heard in the postgame of the pregame show about the physical problems that he's had throughout the year. Nevertheless, it's been a good year for Phil. In front of him will be Elliott, Roberts, Oates, Moore, Riesenberg, and Zeke Moat as the tight end. Anderson and Carthon open as the runners with Baker and Manuel wide and Mark Ingram and Stacy Robinson when they use four wideouts. Sims on first down at the 25. Past midfield into Ram territory. 27 yard gain stopped by Vince Newsom. The Ram defense, they open with three up front. Miller right in the middle and Mike Peel. Green, Kelm, Strickland, and Wiltshire, the linebackers. And the secondary, Gray, Leroy Irvin, the cornerbacks, Newsom and Stewart, the safeties. Oh, that unusual package they used so well last week against Philadelphia with five linebackers and six defensive backs. Anderson, first down. Stopped by Newsom, 13 yards. Hey, these first two plays, Pants, are exactly what the Giants wanted to do. Get this Ram defense off balance. On first down, they come out, boom, they throw one. Now they come in, they put two tight ends in there. Spread that Ram defense out, and then whap, hit Otis Anderson up the middle. Well, Bill Parcells was saying to us yesterday that two weeks off, the extra rest really helped some of his players, including Otis Anderson. Anderson again gets the call. Almost another first down. a lead back. He's a fullback for the Giants. He went through the lead and there was no one to block out there. Watch 44. That hole was so big there was no one in it for Carthon to block. So he had to turn back to the inside. This has been impressive. Well, this is exactly what they have to do. And I'll tell you, if they can score early and get ahead, that'll be a big, big thing for the Giants. next week at Candlestick. They, they are amazing. I think that, you know, they're coming back after winning the Super Bowl last year, and they really went to camp with a with a goal to repeat, and I think that maybe one of the secrets is just changing coaches. And George Seifert has done an excellent job, as Bill Walsh had, but maybe that just rededicates the whole thing, because they are really peaking at the right point. Whatever secret they have, when you 
love to call plays that second and short. You know, if I could just call those, I'd still be coaching because you can do anything, and it's really a, a good time to go to the passing game. I think Sims was looking deep. He was looking for the touchdown strike. You see him look to the left, and then he came back to O.J. Anderson as an outlet. That's really the time to go to the score. That's one of the things that Sims does so well. Whatever you give him, he takes. said the first battle they had to win was his defensive line, which is Alvin Wright at nose tackle, Mike Peel at right end, and Sean Miller at left end. He said they had to win that battle the first thing in the game. So far, they haven't won that battle. So far, the Giants have won it. Second and five. Baker's foot wide to the left. Manual in motion. doesn't get a lot of notoriety, but who's a heck of a player. This guy does get some notoriety. Arch Taylor. Well, and the Giants are going to have to have a big day from this guy. I mean, they, they need a pass rush. He's their best pass rusher, and they know they can't let Everett have time. Brings up a third and seven situation, and here is that five linebacker look. Actually, four of them are down like the Vincent linebacker. Wiltshire is the linebacker.
yard run by Bell. Giants start with three up front. Washington, Eric Howard, the nose tackle, and Leonard Marshall. The linebackers, Reasons, Banks, Pepper Johnson, and Lawrence Taylor. In the secondary, Collins, Williams, Kennard, and Guyton. And they go with their six defensive back packages, White and Cox. Jim Everett last night, he said that the guy you want to watch today that's going to be a big part of this offense is Damone Johnson. And if that's going to happen, that's going to happen on passing on first and second down because on third down, Damone Johnson's not in there. I think they feel that they'll get linebacker coverage on Damone Johnson. But that's not always good. You know, I mean, the linebacker coverage, you're talking about someone like Carl Banks on it, which just happened. Stopped by Banks and Pepper Johnson. They're getting, they're making the giant defense think pass. Now watch the pass rush get up the field. Then in getting up the field, that's creating running lanes straight up the middle for Greg Bell. The giant defense on, on passing as I got second one are so concerned with rushing ever right up the middle. They're letting Greg Bell just run right by him. Third and three. Del Pino now in the game. He is in previous games. Really hurt the Giants. Outside to Rupert McGee. McGee has a Ram first down inside the 25. A pickup of nine. Harry Williams made the stop. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, Pat. What they, what they did is they take Del Pino and they put him out knowing that the Giants are going to be very concerned about that. But here's Del Pino. Now, as he goes in motion, that takes the corner out. Everyone's concerned about Del Pino out here. And boom, they just get Buford McGee out there. Watch what Del Pino does. See him loosen that defense up. Now it opens up the flat, not for Del Pino, but for McGee. First and 10 Rams. thing that the Rams do so well is just move the ball around but I know one thing you can't give that big a cushion out there you can't be afraid of Henry Ellard that you're just running to the goal line when he's running it out I mean the Giants have to play him a little tighter than that they got to bump him around a little more but you can't play way off of him if you're afraid of him. Taylor. But a gain of five. You know, one thing about Greg Bell that's amazing is how can a guy gain over a thousand yards every year and still be an underrated guy? I mean, you, know, you think of this team, you really don't even think of Greg Bell. And you look at his numbers, and, and the guy really has had great numbers. You look at his last two weeks. You see, when the minute he hands off now, Marshall is in the backfield before Bell gets to the line of scrimmage. You have to disrupt their rhythm on their side of the line of scrimmage. Brings up the third and five. They can make the first down without scoring. This is where the Giants' defense is the best. The closer you get to the goal line. the ball loose and a Giants come on top of it. 
for the quarterback, but he's always going for the ball. I always say great players make great plays in big games. There's the first one for Lawrence Taylor. Reasons made the recovery. Taylor locked it loose. First and ten Giants. left first quarter Giants three Rams nothing I'll tell you one thing about this game you look at those coaches down there in the sideline and those players down there in the sideline both sides said that this is going to be a black and blue game Everett was saying I expect to get jacked up in this one and I'm ready for it Sanders to throw it again in the direction of Manny It looked like the ball just sailed on him. Looked like he, you know, went to grip that ball and boom, it just took off on him. You know, we did this game when Sims had a statistically hot day against the Rams out in Anaheim. That was the game that they had to throw every down in the second half. Yeah, and that's not Giants football, and that's the, the thing that they, they hope they don't have to do is they say they want to play a complete game, play all their parts. No flag. Make it. To the Ram 44. Make it brought down by Urban and Jackson. Yeah, it's just amazing. They just can't cover this guy. But it's third down. The Giants have a formation they call scat. Watch 30 make it. He can go any place he wants to. He just goes through, finds a little hole. There's no one on him. He picks up a block there, makes a big play for a first down. The Rams were saying yesterday that they would like to make, in fact, John Robinson was saying they would like to make, make it a non-factor in this game. He better get back on the sideline or he's going to make himself a factor. plays a big game. You get an emotional guy like Bill Sims. He's an emotional guy. 
that they will tend to overthrow that they have so much adrenaline that somehow that adrenaline just goes right into that arm especially early in the game right early in the game in the first quarter and i think that's what we just saw i mean bill sims is so pumped up he's having a hard time keeping the ball in the stadium There's a guy that has a lonely feeling. You know, he's been not active. He's been on injured reserve. And being on injured reserve, you can't even practice with the team. So for the last month and a half, uh, he not only hasn't really been part of the team or playing, but even during practice, he can't be out there with them.
the Giants have improved tremendously this year. Special team. And they're down in a hurry. Led by Lee Rousseau. 45 seconds left for a quarter. 6 nothing. And Giants Stadium sold out on an almost balmy day. Pat Summerall with John Madden. address here. Uh oh, it's the old Coochie Coochie play. Sharon. Coochie Coochie. Coochie Coochie to you too, ma'am. Herrera has the ball. Touchdown. Was that the secret weapon? And who's going to win that case of great tasting Miller Lite and go to the Super Bowl? We're going to get that cake. Nothing. With 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter, the Giants lead the Rams. You know, one great thing about about playing at home in the playoffs, you know, the Giants in the playoffs here have never had a team score against them. That's one good thing. The other thing is when you can score early at home, then you get your crowd in the game. I've ever seen in my life was Fred Blitnikoff, and last night John Robinson was saying that this guy has hands like Blitnikoff. He said he has hands like Larchin, you know, those types of guys that, that were the great hands that ever played. So if you think of him as a tight end, he said he's really more of a wide receiver. Thing we were talking about how the Rams over the years throw the ball to a lot of different guys. Look at this, the wide receivers 139 times, 93 to the running back. Now Pete Holohan is just a separate, he's half wide receiver, half tight end, half back, and he caught 51. Eric Dorsey.
Murphy just activated yesterday. That will be his first snap in like 14 weeks. time just now he gets a big play let's watch it here in the clicker and we'll see you see once he can get up even with a guy and he throws that left arm up under panky and gets into this position now he just keeps working 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 and there's no way that he's not going to get ever that is a tough thing for a left tackle to have to block him by himself i think the rams should maybe keep a tight end over on Taylor a little more somebody has to bother him Trying to get rid of the ball to avoid the sack. 
So he just throws that ball out. Now, if that ball doesn't go forward, I don't know if this comes forward. If this ball doesn't come out forward, that's a lateral. Now, if it's a lateral, then that's a fumble. If that doesn't go forward, that can't be a forward pass, and that could be the Rams' ball. Which is exactly what they're saying, and I think they might be reviewing this one. I think they have to say that, that the call is right, that uh, it's a loss of down for throwing the ball away, but if it didn't go out forward, then it could be a fumble. Third and 27. left to play in the first half Bill Sims on the red phone I think he dodged it. yeah yeah I think he dodged a bullet on that one Pat and he's talking to Ron Earhart the offensive coordinator because I still think after looking at that play again I still think that was a fumble and the Rams did recover and that was not a smart play by Bill Sims Three. You know, Leonard Marshall is one of the best defenders against the run that there is in this league, and he plays what they call a two-gap. And a two-gap is when you have the gap to your left, you're responsible for that, and also the gap to your right. And there's no better two-gapper in the league than Leonard Marshall. in here so that they can get pressure on Everett and work on Doug Smith who they think pass protection wise is the weak link of this team. You see they get Marshall on Smith and they think that they can get that push up there but they just have both those guards in there helping. That's the place they feel they have to put pressure on Everett up the middle. If they can right over Doug Smith with no help. Third and short. Lawrence Taylor was trying to hit that inside gap himself. He said they're trying to get different guys in there. Offside, number 56, defense. First there it down. is right there, Lawrence Taylor in the neutral zone before the ball snapped. And that gets a Ram first down. Right at midfield. Just enough to make Irv Panky think he was 
not going to blitz. That's the and second the time they've knocked Everett down, but did you see that? The whole top of his body show. Here's the hand off the bell. He's hit by Taylor. Maybe that upside, uh, that offside call against him that gave him the first down upset his temperament a little bit. I tell you, that did. I mean, and once he gets, I mean, he can play this type of game where he can go like this. You know, this is a different level where he's going to rush, he's going to do anything. Now watch Gary Reasons come in here. There's Taylor. Boom. And you're going to see right there, you see Reasons dive over. Watch 50 right there in the air. Boom, he's doing a somersault. He makes Bell cut back, and he has to cut back right into Taylor. Third and six. Everett. McGee was the intended receiver, Reason, and Pepper Johnson converged to knock the ball loose. This is defensive football. This is what you say, getting after him. When coaches say, let's go out there and get after him, that is what the Giants just did. They got after him. Hatcher in the front for the Rams. Megan standing back at the 10 for the Giants. Just say do. 
game. Yeah, we look and know that the Giants have to be able to run. Now, look, any game that they have rushed for over 100 yards, they've won every game. Now, when they give a little dink and they don't get that 100 yards, then look, they're 0-4. So when they get a big old heavy boing, and the thing goes up over 100, they win. A little boing, they lose. They lose. They have 84 yards. They're out on the ground. They're getting close to the heavy hammer. Second and 10. They're cutting that nose tackle off. Then they're getting outside, stretching the defense, stretching the Ram defense, and then making quick cutbacks. Lewis Tillman has learned well from O.J. Anderson yes, this year. He has. Giant first down, their own 47. They lead 6 nothing. Less than seven minutes remain in the first half. A game that the Giants wanted that defensive game the, the pass rush the Taylor coming hard being able to ball control run the game because when you can run the ball in the game then Bill Sims is a much much better quarterback when he has to do it all himself he's not as good they're over 100 that means they're going to win him as a pass rush. See, now here the, the Ram defense does a good job of stretching it out. They didn't give him the cutback. You see, Tillman looked for the cutback. It wasn't there. He had to run into green. Third and five, seven plays on this drive. They've all been run. That'll change right here. Green makes Sims take off. yard I don't I don't think he knew it I think that you know he was there and if you're going to do it in this type of game you got to sell out and get that extra yard you can't leave it a yard short I don't know that if they have a fake punt in their game plan or in their repertoire yeah, we've but, seen him uh, yeah. uh, uh, snap it to reasons All right this would be the perfect spot land that I will punt it Gary Reese had stop 
Costa. The one thing that the Giants knew that they had to not let him throw when he wants to look. They've sacked him twice. They've hurried him seven times. Make him throw when he didn't want to. They've knocked him down twice, and he's fumbled once and lost. So it brings up third and four. Number 30. 345 left to play in the second quarter. If they want to, if they want to come underneath and clamp underneath in their zone defense on the receivers underneath, then they're going to be able to hit that next level. And they're always thinking about Holahan underneath. They clamp on that. They're worried about Del Pino underneath. Then they start to hit Ellard on that next level. see guys running up and down the field all day no one tackling them, waving them by these teams got here because they're both fundamental they both tackle well second down talking to people about being chosen and how you are chosen. Here's their reaction. John, put Carl Banks on the All Madden team. Put LT on the All Madden team, John. John, I'd like you to put Joe Montana on the All Madden team. How about it? <laughs> Tremendous acclaim. Well, we get all kinds of input goes into this team. It's in the computers right now. Thrown Everett out of sync. They've already hurried him 11 times. They've knocked him down. 
down four times, two sacks, but good coverage on one end, good hitting on the other end, good pressure. The Giants' defense are really putting all the parts together here in the first half. Toward the nine, Hatcher into punt, make it back at about the ten. of the all Madden team. Here's when you can see it. Well, yeah, this 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 looks good. I kind of like the picture here. I mean, there's a guy who's playing like X today. You know, er everything here is pretty good. They're working on it. You can see it in here. The thing I don't like is this. I don't I don't I don't think that should be. You know, no, we don't even know what that means. I think that should be like six. I thought it was five. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's neat. Yeah, too neat. Yeah, too good looking. Too sophisticated. This is Anderson on first down. Maybe a yard. Stopped by Kevin Green. A minute 32 left to play in the first half. That ball at their own 10, leading 6-0. I think the Giants are thinking down here they've worked this hard in this first half to get a 6 nothing lead that they don't want to do anything stupid. They don't want a, a turnover here. They don't want a big loss here. They don't want to give the Rams a chance to get a defensive score. Rams kind of have to think, well, we got them where we want them. Now we better go after them and get the ball right here. The Rams have gotten a reputation over the year of being a quick starting team here. They have not been shut out, in fact, in the first half of any game this year. I would. Uh, the Rams are taking a timeout now. I'm surprised they didn't take a timeout in the play before. But I think they have to take the timeouts now and then try and try and get another strike at him before they go in the house. Coming up at halftime, Brent, Irv, Dick, and Will bring you up to date on the playoff picture, and they'll talk live with Pittsburgh quarterback Bobby Brister. And Giants running back Joe Morris, who has been idle the entire year. Where are those guys? I don't see them now. They were down there in the, like, by in the end zone uh, before the game. I don't know. Oh, oh, here they are. Look, we got stuff. Oh, there's Brent. There's Brent right there. Looks like he's getting ready. Butkus was getting his gear on. Here's Herb. Here's Herb. There. I'll tell you one thing about that group of guys. They're they're all over the place. They're like ants. You know, like like when you have a piece of cake sitting out, you got a lot of ants around it. Those guys are like ants. They were in San Francisco yesterday, flew all night to get back here for this. Well, that's a problem. He's close to a giant first down. They want a timeout. Stewart stopped Megan. Well, that's a chess game. If if the Rams could have held him there, then they could have forced the Giants to punt and try and get another strike. Now the Giants get a first down. They figure their field position is better now, being on the 20. So if they take a timeout, they must want to take another strike at it. Although I think when you're on the minus 20 I still think you're in a in a pretty dangerous field position. Megat did get the first down. That obviously is why they took the timeout. That's Fritz Shermer there the defensive coordinator of the Rams. Came up with that game plan that was so effective last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think defensively they've been they've been pretty effective the first half of this game it's just been that that giant defense has kept the offense off balance and they lead six nothing 42 seconds remain now watch out for Megan would you he comes out of the backfield Megan's got 
Jackson Blatter. Goes out of bounds. Another first down. Urban. A pickup of 15. This is the first time that I, I ever remember the Giants having a player like Dave Meggett. You, you go back a lot longer than me. I don't know if you can remember a guy that, you know, out of the backfield, kick returner, punt returner. If there's anything that, that helped this team this year, I think you have to say this guy helped it the most. This is an element that I can't remember, along with you, that they've ever had. I'm sure that no one else can remember one. Here's Sims with position and they just did something stupid because now the Rams are in position that they can get a score. They played the whole first half. They had them under control. Then they let them back in with 24 seconds. Rams have two timeouts left. Giants won 24 seconds. First and 10 Rams at the Giant 20. in motion. Everett will have time. Anderson, touchdown. Seconds remaining in the first half. Rams up by a point. I tell you, that has to be a killer to go in the locker room like this because the Giants won every area. They, you know, they did everything darn near perfect in the first half except this. They get the pressure and he steps up here and he throws this ball in the and the defender. You can see Jerry Gray. He's a safety on their nickel package. He's just playing free safety. He just reads the ball, knocks it up in the air, and Stewart comes up with the interception. And then Everett to Anderson. Yeah, look to the right, then to the middle, then back to the left. And Flipper Anderson was just standing out there all by himself. So the Rams will kick off after Anderson's touchdown. The protection. Yeah, and then you'll see that they give him time, way too much time, and then watch Cliff for Anderson. It really wasn't a pattern. He just stood there and waited for the ball. Byron Guyton was a giant defender who knocked him out of bounds. 7-6 Rams. Well, that's that cover two of the Giants play that zone defense. The corners are up and the safeties get out. And then Guyton is responsible for that area. When a guy has the time and he drills it like Jim Everett drilled that one, there's not a heck of a lot you can do about it. Like the Rams can't decide where they want to line up to cover this kick. Confusion's good. Line drive, knuckle fielded by Cross. And the big tight end gets out of bounds. 14 seconds left in the first half. The Giants 
scored first, a 35-yard field goal by Allegri, then a 41-yarder by Raul, and the Giants, uh, the Rams just scored 20 yards out from Everett to Anderson. 17 seconds remain first half. Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Second half. The Giants will kick off to the Rams, who lead 7 6. Brown and Del Pino back deep. It will be Del Pino. Two about to 29. Greg Jackson nice made the stop. Nice Statistically, the half, the first half belonged to the Giants. Well, you can see they rushed for over 100 yards in the first half. We know that any time they rush for over 100 yards, they, they win. They had the total yard. But the big thing is that turnover, that turnover just before the halftime. And you can see the Rams scored five touchdowns off seven Giants turnovers in the last three games. So you say, how have the Rams beaten the Giants? Well, we just saw one way. Buford McGee is the lone setback. Everett goes right to work. Quickly. Well, taken down quickly by Mark Collins. You know, it's interesting to see an adjustment. The first thing I see is that Lawrence Taylor comes on a pass rush and that they are going to help Irv Pankey out there now. In fact, on that last one, they kept Buford McGee in, and he stayed in right behind Pankey, and they doubled Taylor. So as Irv Frost was saying, that's one of the things they talk about. They have to control or do something for Lawrence Taylor. Makes it second and six. Of Perry Williams, the Rams first down, a gain of 28. Yeah, it looks like Everett, that confidence he got just before the halftime, is carrying over now. Ellett is just going to come on and in. It looks like Perry Williams got a little flat-footed. He got back there and just waited like he got frozen, and Henry Ellard was able to get the in on him. Ellard splits out to the left this time. Bell and McGee are behind Everett. To the air. To Anderson. Picked off by Mark Collins. Almost a simultaneous catch with Collins and Anderson. And Collins came up with it. If the Rams are going to go deep, that's the guy they want to get it to. Flipper Anderson. Mark Collins, probably the best of the giant defensive back. He knows right now that Flipper Anderson's going deep. So he just runs stride for stride. It just becomes a jump ball. Collins wins the jump. He just took it away from him. That ball was just jumped. Look, look, there's four hands up there. All four hands have the ball now. But as they go down, Collins is two end up with it. After further review, the play stands. McElwee's microphone obviously repaired at the half. They reviewed the play and it'll stand. First and ten Giants from their own 20. This is Tillman. Dragged down by Leroy Irvin. Newsom 
one of the giant, one of the Rams safety men just got back from the locker room. He had his ankle x-rayed at the half. And now Leroy Irvin limps off. Henley has taken his place. Second and eight. side of the field Kilman got almost enough for a first down in fact he did but it's going to be against the Giants well, I wonder if that thing to OJ Anderson in the first half when he hit shoulders over there with Leroy Irvin I wonder if that was more serious than it looked his penalty is going to be against the Giants we come back in the second Illegal half block in the back number 84 throwing the run all against Moat. second down Anyway, we see Lewis Tillman starting the uh, second half for O.J. Anderson. He said penalty was against Zeke Bowat. Here's Tillman here. There's the block right there. Well, I don't know. That's awfully picky because what the rule is, you have to have your head in front. Now, it looked like to me that Zeke Bowat's head was in front when he made contact. Second and 18, back at the 12-yard line. Sam just got the penalty. Got a chance to get even. Washington knocked him out of bounds, and it's a first down. Maybe that's the way to do it. Get a penalty and then go out and get the first down for your team. Although, again, I thought his head was in front. I don't think that was a penalty. And you see the play fake. That's the thing that Sims does well. He play fakes to Carthon. And then he finds, boom, he finds his tight end over the middle. But to be able to play fake, you have to have the running game going. And that's what the Giants had in the first half. Leroy Irvin, who had to exit a couple of plays ago, getting his knee re-wrapped. Re Cross goes in motion on first down. Hand off is to Anderson. About a yard. Stopped by Fred Strickland. 7-6. Rams leading as Irvin returns to the Rams secondary. Hey, it's tough enough being a corner out there and having to cover those those speedy wide receivers with when when your knees feel good, but when you got your, your old knee all taped up and you're a ten year veteran and you have to get out there on a corner on an island out there all by yourself, that's tough. But again, this is playoff time. What that do? There's nothing to save yourself for. If you don't win, you don't have to worry about what you're going to do tomorrow. This is the finale. Sims to throw it. Faced by Green. Fumbled. Carthon hurried it out of bounds. And Sims was the last guy to have possession. Hey, that was Kevin Green. He was dogging Sims all the way. He is going to come from the outside and watch him come. He, he comes like a shot there right by Carthon or over him or through him. Sims starts to run. Green is in pursuit. Now, he's not only going to hit him, but he's going to try and knock the ball out. In fact, as he hits him, that ball pops out of there. Now, again, as you said, the last guy to have control before it went out was Phil Sims. So it's still giant ball third. 26. Sims the forward handoff to make it. Got some room. He can maneuver. Another good pursuit by the Rams. Gary Gray got him down. Pick up of nine. And Landetta trots on. Back deep for the Rams. Landetta to punt. 7 6. Rams lead. Landetta hits a good one. Now he feels it at the 22 yard line. No room. No place to go. Now there might be. Nope. Good pursuit again by the special team. Pepper Johnson. Forty-nine 
nine yard punt. A loss of 11 on the return for the Giants net 60. 7 6 at Giants Stadium. The Rams leading the Giants by a point. They got their touchdown just before the end of the first half. These fans are getting into it now, aren't they? They love their defense here in the Meadowlands. And off Bell. Eric Howard stopped him after a pickup of two yards. And these guys are playing well, and John Robinson knew last night it was going to be tough. That, that these guys are, are so solid and so fundamental that you're not going to get any gimmies. Everything you're going to do, you have to earn. Second and eight. Into some very thick track it, traffic hit by Kennard, who's hurt. I think Kennard hurt himself on that hit. He was just waiting for him in there, Pat. Kennard is the free safety. Now, you see Flipper Anderson. He's going to run it in. Now, once he runs it in, Kennard is just going to be waiting for him. Kennard can see the ball coming and Flipper Anderson coming. And he just waited and put a lick on him. But in putting the lick, he got licked. Anderson saw Kennard coming as well. That's a tough thing. You don't know whether you concentrate on the ball in the air or the helmet in the air. Brings up the third down for the Rams. Back at their own 12-yard line, third and eight. Another way to use speed is you can use speed either by going deep and going in or coming across on a diagonal. And that's what the Rams are doing here. They're taking Ron Brown, one of the fastest guys in football. See him coming across the field right here? You use your speed on depth or you use it on width. That's a new play the Rams have been working on for a couple of weeks. The diagonal to Ron Brown. Throw Damone Johnson, who was pretty well covered by Perry Williams. Let's watch the blocking on Lawrence Taylor here. Now they're getting to have a tight end on him, so that delays them just enough. And they and they bring the guard out on him, Tom Newberry. Newberry comes out and kicks him out. So in the second half, they're blocking Taylor different ways every down. You just about have to do that. Now, you know, if you leave one guy out there like this on an island with him, he'll kill you. Here he comes again. Everett. Intended for Holohan. The other way to do it, if you're going to be left on an island like this, like Banky here, you got to hold him. Irv Banky got away with this one. Watch him. He just grabs Taylor and just jerks him down. They didn't see that one. Then it was Leonard Marshall who made Jim Everett throw it when he didn't want to. That yeah, brings up a third down situation. Third and ten. Rams operating from their own 27 yard line with nine and a half minutes left third quarter. Thank he knew last night we talked to him. He was going to have his work cut out for him today. But this guy just keeps coming all the time. Everett up into the pocket. The Buford McGee. And McGee will have a ram first down out of bounds at about the 48. Knocked out by Kelvin White. 22-yard pickup for the ram. Now you'll see what they do if we just let this run that, that the Giants are all getting deep. You, you see the zone here? Now if we can stop it here, you can see how they got their zone and their zone deep here. So you have areas underneath here. And that's where the Rams hit. That's where the Rams hit this one to McGee. Last time, whenever it had 18 straight, that's how he did it. Run him off and hit underneath. 
last couple of weeks, Buford McGee has come up with some clutch catches. This is Bell. Wrapped up by Eric Dorsey. Maybe two yards. Beautiful, beautiful day in the New York area. What a sight that is. Seven six the Rams over the Giants the NFC playoffs the winner to play the 49ers next week second and eight yeah, and that's what it's all about I mean this is what it's all about playoff then championship game then the winner of that goes to the Super Bowl intended for a whole hand and knocked down by Mike Collins Hey, that is two things again pressure watch watch the middle you see how they're putting the pressure up the middle making Everett again throw when he's not ready not letting him step up he throws that here and then on the other end very good coverage by Mark Collins that Collins has been all over the field today he's had a very effective day well, the Rams have tried to get the ball to Flipper Anderson six times today have only completed one, and that was a touchdown. This is a Ram timeout. As Everett takes the stroll over to the bench, they lead by a point. Ram seven, the Giants six. 8.37 left to play in the third quarter. Coming up on the NFL today, post game with Brent, Irv, Dick, and Will. And we'll hear from both teams in their locker room. And we'll also hear from Ronnie Lott of the victorious San Francisco 49ers. Ronnie Lott still thumped this. I was watching a little of the game yesterday, and the first thing I saw was Ronnie Lott intercept one and run it in. Another time. Let's have it. Back, knocked out of bounds, and knocked the ball loose. Incomplete. Hit by Perry Williams. And Collins again. That again was a good rush. The Giants are rushing a lot better than I thought, and they're making Everett just get back and get rid of that ball sometimes before he wants to. Then on the other end, they have that good coverage. Remember Lawrence Taylor just broke an ankle about a month ago. Like he was lifting a little after that. Rams continue to kick away from Megan. And the ball goes out of bounds. And the Giants will take over with 8.25 remaining third quarter. 31-yard punt. Giants Stadium, that's the kind of pad I haven't seen before, John. Well, again, it's it's just to build up that shoulder pad, you know, where you want something on the shoulder underneath the pad, and and they have to build one side up or the other side up, and sometimes like this, they just have to build it up on the run. First down, Giants, and they're only 18. Anderson and Carson behind Sims. The handoff is to Anderson. for four yards. Mike Wilcher brought him down. Hey, that's what two linebackers do when they get together. They just sit and spit. There's Taylor and Banks, two of the... The giant offense is, is having more success running inside than I thought they'd be able to, and I think you got to give credit to that inside group there, to Bart Oates, the center, and Roberts, and Eric Moore, the center and two guards doing a good job in there of of getting movement on that nose tackle and and the uh, uh, linebacker. Speaking of good guards, that, this is one that had a great career with the Rams, Dennis Hara. Yeah, he sure did. He was one of the first weightlifters of football players. In fact, his nickname was was Hercules. It, they called him Hercules. Know, for short, but he was one of the first guys that had that big pumped up muscle look, and he was a heck of a player. It's down West Virginia. Here visiting the Rams. Here's Anderson. Again, he picks his way for good yardage. Stopped by Jerry Gray. But again, they're able to work that middle. And uh, uh, here's the Here's the offensive lineman. You know, the Rams have always had great running backs, and maybe the reason they've had great running backs is that they've had great offensive linemen. 
Look at these guys who've been in the Pro Bowl. Or maybe because they've had great running backs, these guys have been great. Or maybe these guys have made the running back. You know what I'm saying? Three of them still active. Yeah. Not that much short. With seven minutes exactly left, third quarter. And Bill Parcells has made up his mind that uh, we're going to run this thing. I don't know. I always think that this short yardage situation is a is a great down. It's like a free down. It's a great down to go play pass and throw a deep one. That's what Bill Sims is going to do. Didn't get it out of there. Of course, it didn't work. <laughs> but says he was trying though. He just uh, look. He's holding the ball too low. He gets it down there, and he never gets that thing up. I mean, that ball is just thrown too low. Mike Peel gets up and knocks it down, but but when you're back in that pocket, I think you have to get it up higher than that. Either that or Mike Peel has to get more penetration on his pass rush. Anderson has 16 carries for 90 yards. That's Maurice Parker. He'll run for the first down. Picked up a yard. They needed to put Mel Owens. Did you hear that collision, though, Pat? Watch when Carthon goes in there. Right here, I swear, it's like he ran into a wall. I mean, that was a collision. That was like a whap. And then, now what he did is watch him. He keeps his feet going, keeps his feet going, and makes that one last effort there that picks up the first down. That ball just inside the 40. There's 40. too far. It was doing a good job. Doug Riesenberg is doing a good job over there on Kevin Green. Bill Sims just isn't having one of his days. I tell you, you know, Riesenberg is drawn of the giant offensive lineman is drawn the toughest job. And uh, he's been doing a pretty good job here. But look where the Giants running success has been. 12 times for 63 yards up the middle, 63 and 50 to their right side. Now they go left with Anderson. Get three or four. Larry Kell, Fred Strickland. Two Ram defenders. Lawrence Taylor, deep in thought. Well, he's deep in thought about what he's going to do the next time they get out there. Those defensive guys always love to see first down. And that means that they get a little extra breather. What a defensive guy hates is three and out. Third and about six. Out of the spread. Incomplete flag on the play. Stacy Robinson was the attentive receiver. The marker came flying from way deep behind the secondary. Holding number 23, defense, five yards, automatic first down. That's the thing. It's not the five-yard penalty. It's on Michael Stewart, but it's an automatic first down. Now, Michael Stewart is going to be on the right-hand side of the screen here. See him, 23 right there? You saw him. He just grab Stacy Robinson as he made the turn. Again, it was five yards, but automatic first down. And Sims will throw it on first down. To the Rams, 40, and picked up a 11, caught by Dave Megan. I think this Dave Megan has to be some kind of MV MVP that offensively, he's the, the biggest thing that the Giants have going, and they have to get the ball in his hands as much as they can. Well, he's caught four passes today for 52 yards. He's not given much of a chance to kick return because every time the Rams punt, they're punting away from Megan. First down, Giants at the Ram 40. They trail by a point. Sanders has the ball deflected again. 
he is upset with himself. Alvin Wright got the hands up that time. Yeah, and that shouldn't happen. I mean, it's not like like these guys are getting that close to him. I think the quarterback has to be able to find lanes. He not only has to be able to find receivers, but he has to be able to find passing lanes because that's good pass protection. Bart Oates had Alvin Wright still on the line of scrimmage, and he just jumped up in the air. I think it's a quarterback's responsibility to find not only a receiver, but to find a passing lane between the Russian defensive linemen. Second and 10. Close to Allegri's range. Sims is having success with this type of thing. You know, hitting his tight end, hitting his back. He's only completed two to the wide receivers. That's where he's having the problem. But see, being able to get guys underneath, like Maurice Carthon, he's able to do that. And maybe that's the thing they should stick with. That makes it third and two. At the Ram 32. but Moan has the ball regardless. That was a heck of a pass and a heck of a catch, and I think the penalty is going to be on Michael Stewart again for holding. He was holding Moat before the ball got there. Watch him. Good down, play pass, good fake in there, throws out here. Now watch Stewart. He's on him and grabbing him and face masking him before he gets there. The penalty is declined. They declined the penalty. Moat's catch, one-handed, <laughs> makes it a first down. Max Stewart did just about everything illegal you can do before yeah. the goal about this. <laughs> That's really fighting. See, here's where Sims has had his success. Look, six to seven for the running back, two for three to the tight end. Not much to the wide receiver. First and goal at the nine. the three up by Strickland a gain of five you know, we always talk about the thing that OJ Anderson does is get in the hole and move in the hole watch him here now he's in the hole watch he makes that move right there plants a right foot cut plants a left foot and cuts back that was a double cut in the hole that's what makes OJ Anderson special Second and goal. There's Damian Johnson, 68, Pat, in the first time since he had back surgery. Anderson again. Perhaps a yard before he's wrapped up by Mel Owens and Larry Kilm. Third down. Well, now the Giants are bringing their receivers back in. One thing you know that if they're going to run the ball in, going to be O.J. Anderson. He's the only running back to score his touchdown this year running. O.J. now has 100 yards and 19 carries. I think this is an area where Bill Marcel needs us to decide to play pass it, pass it on third down, and think to play kick a field goal, or if you run, you have to say you're going to go for it on fourth two. Third and goal at the two. Very valuable. 
They kept the ball six minutes and 28 seconds in that 82 yard drive. Allegre will try for the extra point with Hostetler holding. The Giants have recaptured the lead 12 to 7. Seven left in the third quarter. It's the Giants 13, the Rams 7. There's a penalty on the yeah. extra point, yeah. And this is the type of thing, if it's against the Rams, which I'm sure it is, uh, the point stays, and then they just add it on to the kickoff. We have a running forward and leaping uh, against the defense. That's 15 yards and force on the kickoff. Oh, boy. Is that what? You caught someone running forward and leaping? And it's 15 yards for running forward and leaping? That's too much on an extra point. Let them have it. They'll tack on the 15 yards on the kickoff. 13-7 Giants. Dumbest penalty I've ever seen. Watch this. They call that running forward and leaping there's nothing wrong with that i mean washington just stands there and he just jumped up in the air they give him 15 yards for that that's stupid that's true i mean that's not even a rule I, they, they made something up they're just trying to to call things that shouldn't be well, they're going to kick off from the 50. Or James Washington is just standing up there. He jumps up in the air and they give him 15 yeah. yards. That's a dumb penalty. Only the sixth penalty today. The off goes right to the goal line to Del Pino. He was knocked out of bounds. And about the 18. 16 yard return. penalty flag on the kickoff after the original penalty. Now well, maybe not. Of course that really didn't hurt the Rams too. It was a 15 yard penalty but they're still you know they're getting the ball in the 16 yard and the only way it would have hurt is if the Giants had decided to go for an onside kick. But what the rule is a guy can't step forward and jump up. That's not Anderson in motion. Everett looked in that direction and came back to Ellard and missed it by a wide margin. Hey, one thing, Ellard has been covered well today. The, the Giant defense has done a good job. The Giant defense has also done a good job of getting or keeping Jim Everett out of sync. That makes it second and ten. Exactly what Carl Banks said yesterday they had to do is one, he said, when we play our zones, we got to clamp on to these guys short, and then we have to tackle. He said last time, he said, we didn't do anything. He said, we just backed up, we didn't clamp on them in our zone, and we didn't tackle. And that was exactly what he said he had to do, and he did it exactly that time. He's up a third and five situation. Olahan out of the backfield quickly. Ellery. Takes a quick post from Everett. And got the Rams. And first down, a gain of 23 yards. John Robinson was talking how Ernie Zampezi, when he first came to the Rams, that was his favorite pattern, that quick post, that seam post. And he said they went for almost a year, and they never completed it. And John said, you know, let's throw that one out. And Ernie just kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing it. And he said, now it's one of the best things they do. They just kept throwing it. 
They've hit it a couple of times today. First and ten Rams. 44 yard line. The line of scrimmage. Ellard again swings in motion. Back to Bell. Gets across midfield, a gain of seven yards. Stopped by Collins and Tenard. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Giants 13, the Rams 7. And we now pause for a word from your local station. Divisional playoff between the Rams and the Giants. The Giants leading 13-7. One more quarter of action left. Second and three, the winner of this to play the 49ers next week. The Bell. And Bell hammers into the Giants secondary. Down to the 30 before Canard trips him up. 18 yards for Greg Bell. You talk about guys who make moves in the hole. Greg Bell did then. There's going to be a collision on the left side. Watch that. Right, right to the left. Bell sees that. Then he cuts back, finds a hole in there, makes another move downfield before they finally finish it off. Yeah, I know what John Robinson's telling. This is when he starts. Fourth quarter, fourth quarter's Ram football. Wear him down. We're wearing him down. All those buzzwords he's been using forever, he's using now. Everett back to throw at this time. Ellert. That's a catch. Sheldon White was the nearest giant defender. 16 yards and a ran first down. Sheldon White looked like he thought that Ellard was out of bounds. Watch him. He just kind of pulls up in the play. He should have ran through and tried to knock something out of there. Ellard made a heck of a deal by keeping both of those feet in bounds. Dragging him down before he went out. Ellard has seven catches for the day. First down Rams at the Giants 14. Giants leading 13-7. Bell left side. About the nine. Collins. Get him after a gain of five. There's Bill Parcells. The guy behind him in the red jacket is Bill Belichick, who's the defensive coordinator of this giant defense. I think he's done an outstanding job. I mean, he's one of those. Real bright guys and studies everything, knows everything, and always has his players prepared. Here's another of those who's been mentioned to mention as a potential head coach. Here's Everett. Threw it away. Couldn't find anybody. Yeah, and it just seems like the the closer that you get to the goal line, the better the Giants play defense. You know, we've seen those goal line stands that they've had. And like three weeks in a row, they had a goal line stand. Yeah, I mean, they're just tougher and tougher. Third and five. Anderson motion left. Flag on the play. Here's Everett. Complete intended for Buford McGee, but a penalty marker on the play. And I think that could have been one of those penalties, Pat, that the Both whistle five, blew. 75 offense before the snap. Before the snap. No play. Yeah, I, I was going to say the whistle did blow before the play, so it's going to be five yards, but they'll it'll still be the same down. And that's what Lawrence Taylor does in addition to getting sacks and hurries and knockdowns and all those things. He gets penalty. You see, Panky gets so worried about Taylor there that you start to move before the ball snaps. You see, he's up at the top of the picture there. You see 75? He's getting in position to block Lawrence Taylor before the ball snaps. Taylor gets a lot of those penalties. Keith Millard gets a lot of those right. kind of penalties. Third down, back at the 10 now. 
back at the 15, make it. Bowenhan swings to the left. It's headed for McGee, and he can't find the handle. Taylor was again chasing Everett. Yeah, he was there. He was right there. Tom Newberry's blocking him. Watch, they bring the left guard 66 out. That is a real matchup. Taylor's arguing that he was held. Newberry is an ex-wrestler. He's doing anything he can to keep Lawrence Taylor off of Jim Everett. Uh, the Rams will go for the field goal from 31 yards away. Lansford only missed once from this distance all year. And he hits this one. 13, 10 now is the giant lead. With 12 minutes and 51 seconds left to play. Lawrence Taylor, Bill Parcells. Coach probably saying, I just need, well, not even a whole quarter. They rewrap his ankle. Well, you know that Lawrence Taylor is gutting it up now. Sometimes you're playing on those things and the adrenaline really works and then you still got adrenaline but you start to get tired you start to feel these things more so that's when you get more bandages you get more tape jobs you just need anything to get you through this last 13 minutes Ashford ready to kick it make it and Ingram back deep for the Giants Right at the 20 yard line. 20 yard return. In the event you might have joined us late, here's the way it happened. First, a 35 yard field goal by Allegra, then a 41 yarder. The Giants led 6 0. Just before the half, the Rams scored their touchdown. Everett to Anderson. And then Otis Anderson, a two yard touchdown run. The Giants recaptured the lead. And the Rams just got a 31-yarder from Lansford. That's the way it stands now. 13-10. First and 10. Megan split wide to the left. Sims looking that direction. Instead. Out of bounds at about the 25. A pickup of six. Knocked out by Mill Owen. Yeah, that's what a guy like Megat gives you. You put him in the game, you split him out, and then everyone says, here's Megat, here's Megat. They start pointing to Megat. You run him off, and then you put another guy out in the area that he vacated. So these guys can really help you when you get the ball in their hands, but they can also help you just when they're on the field. It opens other things up. Just by their presence. Second and four. 13-10, the Giants lead it. Hey, one thing the Giants missed on that play was not having Maurice Carthon in. We've we've seen it how many times Anderson has picked up plays, including a touchdown, and the lead block has been Carthon. I think Carthon got hurt down there in that goal line when he was leading in there for Anderson. And I'll tell you, this running game will miss Maurice Carthon. Bruce Sign has taken Maurice Carthon's place, third and three. Got the first down fumble, and he got it back. Irvin made the stop after a gain of 10. And he got, got a pretty down. good block by, a uh, pretty good lead block by Lee Roussan. Watch him here, Roussan's number 22, right there on Strickland. He gets that block. That lets O.J. make that cut and then get the first down. And the ball gets knocked out and lands got, right in front of him. He got a good bounce. Lee Roussan did that same type of thing that Maurice Carthon has been doing. In a busy day for Otis Anderson. Probably going to get busier. Here he is, right side. Hammers to the 40. Kevin Green tripped him up.
Kennard loosening up on the sideline. Uh, remember that hit that he had yeah. in the middle there where where he went off. Sometimes those things shake you and you and you start to tighten up, especially in the second half. Of these, you know, where you, where you have the colder weather, you tighten up and you just can't get the thing loosened up again. Second down, seven from the 40. Got about three stopped by Kel Stewart. Clock down to almost ten minutes remaining. Third and four coming up. And again, this is the type of game that the Giants want where you get that running game going, you keep this defense off balance, then you throw a play pass in there. I tell you, you look there at Kevin Green, who was the big pass rusher of this Ram team and they have really kept him pretty quiet today. Big third down coming. Sims will throw it. Batted away by Gray. Intended for Odessa Turner and the Giants will have to give it up. Jerry Gray made that look easy, didn't he? I mean, he just reacted. It looked like he was out in the schoolyard or something. He just came in there and swatted that ball down almost with complete disdain. You know, pow, back, get out of here. Landetta to punt. Irvin back deep to handle the punch for the Rams. A couple of plays ago, they were putting a, a wrap on uh, Leroy Irvin's knee. with 9.32 left and the Giants leading 13 to 10. 32 remains. The Giants 13, the Rams 10. Rams ball at their own 20. You know, one of the areas that the Giants have improved most is in their special teams. And this 21, Renee Thompson is one of the best cover guys in the league in all of football. But look, when you're that good, you draw attention all the way <laughs> they just keep playing. They say, they say someone's going to make that one. The 21's not going to make it. I'll guarantee you. Here's Everett straight back. Outside the bell. And that defense swarms on him, led by Pepper Johnson. Five-yard pickup. That's the thing this giant defense has been doing all day is they have been swarming. You know, they're good swarmers. The ball is there, and there's a bunch of blue jerseys around there. Brings up second and five. Rams at their own 25. Clock running. Bell is out. Come on, Johnson. Close to a first down. Almost beheaded by Carl Banks. They're all yelling down there. He's down here. He's down here. They don't give him the first down. That for Johnson. But they did the same thing. You know, the, the Giants are really trying to stop Pete Holohan, not let him get that possession pass. So they run Holohan a little deeper and then demote Johnson underneath. The same type of thing the Giants were doing with Megan to Zeke Moa. First and ten. They have to move it up to their own 30-yard line. Here comes Bell. There he goes down in the arms of Eric Dorsey. A three-yard loss. Hey, you know what happens? Lawrence Taylor is lining up on that side. Watch him. And he comes, so he makes the cutback. So he makes the Rams cut back. And when they do, they cut back into Dorsey. But watch Taylor come from the top. He comes flat. Now, when he sees that, he has to cut back. He can't go outside. So when he cuts back, it's right into Eric Dorsey. So a loss of three makes it second and 13. Comes Taylor to the inside this time to pass it out to Ron Brown. 
out of bounds at the 37. Pickup of 10. As you say, Taylor came to the inside and he drew a crowd. They're keeping it back in now to help stop them. The guard picked him up and everyone kind of met where Lawrence Taylor is. Watch, Taylor starts here. He's going to come in here and watch the crowd that he draws once he comes in. It's not free going in there. There's Boom the center, Boom the back, and the guard grabs him on the way down. Third and three. Gets it out to Brown. And the Rams pick up another first down. Brown stopped by Collins. A gain of 11. Sometimes Everett is just so quick with the ball. Watch, when that back foot hits, the ball's going to be gone. Boom, whap, right out of there. That's the thing that Ernie Zampezi keeps coaching. The way he coaches Everett, he always stands back there right by him and says, let it go, let it go. He said on the Ram practice field, that's all you hear. Ernie Zampezi is saying Everett, let it go, let it go. That's the big adjustment he's made. There he is, back to throw. Mullahan, stopped by Pepper Johnson. Eight of eight. The other thing about Jim Everett is he's a streak passer. And he could get cold and go through some cold spells, but when he gets on a streak, he can really keep the thing going. And no one knows that better than this giant defense. He was on a cold spell when they had that losing streak in the middle of the year. Remember against Minnesota, Chicago, and those teams. Then he got on the hot streak against these guys, the Giants. Second and two. Delmar and Johnson gets inside the 40. Taken down by Collins, but another first down. I think we're starting to see one of these effort streaks right now. That was six straight. And, you know, he just carries himself differently. He moves his feet differently. His eyes look different. And he's just a different quarterback when he gets this thing going. And right now, I feel he's getting it going. Right now, he's not quite sure what well, they want. Confusion's good. <laughs> yeah. Clock running five, less than 520. He never was sure. Now he takes a timeout. The playoff game between the Giants and the Rams. Giants up by three. Ice on the NFL Today postgame with Brent, Herb, Dick, and Will. We'll hear from both teams in their locker rooms. And we'll hear from Ronnie Lott. Yeah, that, the victorious 49ers. That has to be tough for the 49ers. Well, well, it's not tough. I mean, they're still celebrating because they're in a championship game. But watching this game, you have no control over who's going to win, the Rams or the Giants. They're both tough teams. They're both tough teams for the 49ers. But who do you want to win? Uh, and who are you going to play? And, well, in five minutes and 17 seconds of play, and they're going to know. Maurice Tarzan. With a bruised knee, and it doesn't look like he'll be back. No, he doesn't have his pants on anymore. He's sitting out there in long underwear or something. He can't play in underwear. First down, Rams. The Giants 39. That's where he had in motion. It's McGee. And Hooper McGee is down to the 25. Pepper Johnson finally tripped him up. A gain of 14. Good block by Anderson out of front. I'll tell you, who has to feel good over there is Newberry and Panky. They come down, they make good blocks. They have a heck of a kick out. Jackie Slater came across and kicked out on Lawrence Taylor. That opened a big hole for McGee. Did you see that Slater come out there? That was a collision. Now, of course, with the Rams at the 25, well within field goal of range. There's Everett. He's going to take off with it. He slides at about the 11. Everett was upset. Everett looked like he tried to start a fight. Everett says he likes to play crazy. Well, borderline crazy. This is the chains. This is it. You see that big lane they give him? You got to stay in your pass rush lanes. When you don't, any quarterback can run like this. 
And if they slide feet first, you're not supposed to be able to hit them. When Everett's fell in college. Hell is behind Everett. Now four minutes remain. yards holding I'm sure the Giants are going to take that and put him back illegal motion 42 offense penalty is declined second down it wasn't holding it was illegal motion so it a five yard penalty and they really didn't have a game so they turned it down watch Bell that's who was moving again he could move laterally but he can't move forward I don't know. Second and eight. This is what it's all about, though. I mean, here we are in the you know, 13-10, great defensive battle. Guys hitting. The whole thing comes down right here. Just under four minutes left. Bell. To about the five. Collins again made the stop. That'll bring up third down. I think that this is an area, this is not a running down situation, even though the, uh, the Rams can make a first down. But I think that this is a pass situation. They have to run. This has to be a passing situation for the Rams. They take Bell out. Third and three. The Rams in the huddle a long time. And if they don't complete it, I smell overtime. Me too. Sure looks like it. on the ground before it went up his back. Right. You're right. See there it pops out. There it goes back. Collins is going to come in. And I think right here it hits the ground before it goes up the back. I think that was an incomplete pass. It bounced off Anderson first, then hit the ground, then bounced back After up. Further review, the play stands as tall. to see whether that one hit the ground or not. Olahan will hold from 22 yards away for Lansford. This would tie it up with 3.05 left to play. And it's good. Tie score with three minutes, one second left. It's 13-13. There is the biggest cheerleader in the game. And there is one of the biggest motivators in the game. They're both excellent motivators. They're, they're both very good coaches. They're both sound football guys. Guys that like their players and the players like them. Guys that I think can get the most out of any player. This is a game, really, John, that you hate to see either one of them lose. Well, because they're two of the nicest guys right. in the game, too. And, Two hard workers and two guys that have a lot of success, maybe taking overachievers, maybe taking guys that aren't the greatest players, but get them to play great as a team. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. This game produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. 
And the executive producer of CBS Sports is Ted Schick. All in attendance today, I might add. Oh, yeah, they're all here. But, you know, and they should be here. I mean, it scores 13-13. Playoff game. Loser, boom, out. Winner, whap, go to San Francisco. Championship game. Play against the defending world champions for the right to go to the Super Bowl. Can't get any better than this. Absolutely correct. Megan and Ingram back deep. Ready for Lance Rich kickoff. Heard it out of bounds with two minutes and 52 seconds remaining. Again, to summarize, Allegri got it started with a 35 yarder, then hit a 41 yarder. Giants led 6 0. The Rams got on the board in the second quarter to take a 17 a 7 6 lead. Otis Anderson from two yards away put the Giants back ahead, and Lansford has just tied it at 13. Two fifty two left. Giants have all three of their timeouts left. The Rams have only one. First and ten. Make it split wide left. Manuel swings in motion. And Sims goes back to throw it. Screen pass to Anderson, read by Strickland. He was there quickly. Hey, Fred Strickland is a, is a big part of this Ram defense. He's the guy that, that plays linebacker, and then he plays up in the line. In fact, his position is nose backer. See, that's kind of half nose tackle, half linebacker. And that takes a special kind of guy, a guy that can move well enough to be a linebacker and big and strong enough to be a rush lineman. When he was out during the middle of the year, they really missed him. Yeah, he and Kelton are two inside guys, both missed. They thought that hurt their defense one there. Second and 18. It was the throw. For Baker. Incomplete. Urban was back with him, almost had the interception. I'm sure the Giants think they could work on Leroy Urban, but he isn't given an inch out there today. And uh, we've got the two-minute warning. For the game tied 13-13. Giants Stadium, the NFC Divisional Playoff. The Rams, Giants tied at 13. I think this is a big, big play in this game, Pat. With third and 18, the Giants, again, bad field position. You don't want to do anything stupid. You don't want to turn over here. You don't want to do something like you did just before the halftime. Your defense is playing well. So now what do you do? I think you have to take the conservative, safe approach. I wouldn't be surprised if they go to try and get it to make it underneath somehow. Out of the shotgun. Make it comes out of the backfield. He's in. Pass caught. By Lionel Manuel. Whoa, what a clutch. What a clutch catch and throw. I'll tell you, that's the first completion to Manuel a day and Phil Sims' biggest pass of the season. Coming back here, getting that protection, zipping that ball in there, third and 18. You usually don't have any plays that are going to pick you up 20 yards. But I'll tell you, that was a big, 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 big play. That even makes the defense smile. That was a 24-yard pass completion. Oh, yes. Third and 18. This hasn't been one of Sims' best days, but that was one of his best passes. has batted down more balls than I ever remember. Yeah, that's the second one that, that I remember Peel getting. I remember Alvin Wright getting one. Again, it's pretty good pass protection. They're just getting their hands up there and knocking those balls down. That's the fourth one that Sims has had today. I'll tell you, that third down pass, Pat, that was one of the biggest plays that I've ever seen Phil Sims make. Second down and 10. Needs a couple more big ones. Pass quick out to Anderson. Get right at the line of scrimmage. Another big third down coming up. Michael Stewart up quickly. I think they're loosening. Yeah. 
I think that Ram defense has that play down. That, that screen pass out there, they're not going to let that happen. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Giants and the National Football League is prohibited. Third and ten. Again, the Giants have all their timeouts. The clock's running. They're going to have to take a timeout here. 30-second clock is running. Yeah, they had to take the timeout. Bill Simpson spent too much time over there talking about it, so they had to take the timeout. A minute and one second left on the scoreboard. 13-13. Now this is still a big play for the Giants. It's not as big as that last third down because the last time they didn't have good field position. Here they have good field position. Now Bill Parcells is talking to Ron Earhart up, up above trying to get that third down play. The line of scrimmage is the 47 yard line. The Giants own 47. So out of field goal range. No one can come up when you want it. You know, you have all that time. Yeah. You say, well, how about this? How about that? And then pretty soon you have to say, okay, shut up, everyone. What are we going to do? And Phil Simms still doesn't have it. When you get in these kind of games, with this much time in these situations, you want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. 101 left to play. Giants now with two timeouts left. The Rams with one. came very very close to throwing a penalty for for throwing the ball away that time Kevin Green had him he was right there on him Bill Sims threw it there was no one to throw it to in fact it looked like the closest guy was his right tackle Doug Riesenberg much as he starts to run up there he gets a good pressure from the outside steps up now Green's chasing him and he throws out there the only guy out there is his right tackle they could have called him on that one Landetta and the Giants will have to punt it. The Rams will get it. Right now, 54 seconds left. Out of bounds. Ellard and Irvin were back deep for the Rams. The ball goes out of bounds. Just inside the 20-yard line. 13-13. With 47 seconds remaining now. Tonight on CBS, a reminder, it begins with another edition of 60 Minutes. Following 60 Minutes are murder, she wrote. And then the CBS Sunday movie, Murder in Black and White. It's all tonight on CBS. Right now, 47 seconds remain, and the score is tied at 13. And remember, in playoff, the overtime is true sudden death. You just keep playing until someone wins. There's no quarters or anything like that or any more periods. Everett gives it to Buford McGee. Lawrence Taylor on the stop. The clock's still running. Second down and about four. John Robinson signaling that he wants the timeout. That's their last one with 20 seconds left. You know, the Rams are doing this drill that we saw them practice here yesterday. This is a, the same type of thing that they practiced, a two-minute drill. It's ironic. They practiced it going in this same direction. But Jim Everett took the team down the field without any timeouts. They simulated this situation on this field yesterday. They're out of timeouts now with 20 seconds left, 13-13. I think this is a tough thing, too, that the Rams don't want to do anything stupid here. I'm sure you're saying these are our plays, but don't force anything. 
You know, if you throw an incomplete pass, it's okay. If you take a sack, that's okay. But you can't take a turnover. Three weeks in a row, the Rams have had to come back east all the way across the country. New England, Philadelphia now here. 20 seconds left. Give on a draw play to Buford McGee. McGee headed out of bounds, gets the first down with 14 seconds left. Stops the clock. 14-yard pickup. And that was a heck of a run by McGee. One to get through there, two to pick up the first down, and three to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Because now, now the Rams are in a position that they can make a strike here. They can either strike for the end zone or they can strike for the sideline. But with no timeouts, they can't throw the ball inside. They got their three wide receivers, the three speed guys to the right. Everett's going to pick off with it. Gets a first down, but does not get out of bounds. to overtime. It'll be just like starting another game. They'll go out with another coin toss. And they play till somebody wins. Two minute break between overtime. Three minute break now at the end of regulation time. Three timeouts per half. And it's 15 minute periods. First score wins. We'll be covering the coin toss when they get out there. You know, and everyone thinks that it's a big thing to coin toss, and <clears throat> we've studied this in the past, and, and it's about 50-50. You would think that the coin toss would be very much a factor since the first team that scores wins the game. Here it is, Carl Banks, now, Jackie Slater, two Warriors. In the air. I will repeat what you said. What I repeat is what we're going with. Okay? Up it goes. Hits, he says, hits. We want the ball. Rams won the toss. And you heard him say, Jackie Slater, we want the ball. Here's that statistic John Madden was talking about. We are headed to overtime, tied at 13 between the Rams and the Giants. 13-13, Pat Summerall and John Madden. In overtime, the Giants will kick off. You know, you, you talk about the kickoff and, you know, who has the, the best chance and who has the... You know, whatever. I think that the that the Giants have to be in better shape here because they've had two weeks rest. Right. The Rams have had to play an extra game. They've had to travel 18,000 miles in the last three weeks. And if this isn't a tired team, I don't know what a tired team it is. Should be. This is a tired team that's just getting up, just getting up, just playing amazing under these conditions. Del Pino deep for Allegra's kickoff. Del Pino at the 10. Greg Jackson wraps up Del Pino. The last overtime game we saw just a second ago was the first. I remember it well. Well, you played in that. Day. I was yeah. looking at that in 1958, and that had to be when you were playing. Yes. Nobody knew what to do when the game was over. Never heard of overtime. We're wandering around Yankee Stadium. Did anyone walk into the house? I don't think so. Yeah. At least they had enough to, to stay out there. All these guys, they stay out there. They know this again. This is the for the playoffs. The winner goes to play San Francisco. Here's Everett. Talking about the winner playing San Francisco, John Robinson said after they lost to the 49ers, he said they were so down, he had to think of something positive. 
So he told his team, okay, look, four more. Four more games, and we get these guys again. And that's kind of been their motto, is if they win four more games, they get to play the 49ers. Now they're just an overtime away from it. They have a first down at the 35. Here's Everett. Ellard. Incomplete. Lawrence Taylor around the corner hit Everett just as he let it go. Again, Everett gets rid of the ball so quickly that you can have a good pass rush, but the minute he gets down there, that ball's going. So the best thing you can do is make him throw it when he doesn't want to, and then hit him right after he throws it. Second and 10 at the 35. Overhand swings in motion. Taylor coming up the middle. Taylor takes the shot from Everett. Sheldon White made the stop, but another ramp first down. You know what I mean? Everett back here, back, back, back. The minute that back foot hits, that ball's gone. As Ernie Zampese tells him, let it go, let it go. So he gets back there, and boom, he lets it go to Henry Ellard. The, the, the Rams, I think, are showing a mere amazing will here. I mean, they have to be tired, but the, the condition that they're in to play like this for as long as they have, this is something. Here comes a giant blip. Everett going for Anderson in the play. Sheldon White is going to be called for pass interference. Deep in giant territory. The whole season can be that play. the Rams. Hey, and the Rams are one of the teams that have beaten the 49ers this year. Yes! The 49ers really, I think they probably know each other as well as yeah! you can, but this Ram team right! matches up well. Let's look at that touchdown play again. Everett to Anderson. Again, they're getting the pressure up the middle. That leaves one-on-one -on -one coverage outside because the Giants were in a blitz. Clipper Anderson just runs right by Mark Collins. Mark Collins really had a heck of a game all day. <laughs> Anderson could take somebody with him. <laughs> like I said, he's from South Jersey. He's going to go home. Run the up. 
Collins looks over, Flipper Anderson, the fastest receiver on this Ram team, runs by him and takes it to the house. Hey, with what these Rams had to do to get to this championship game, this was a great effort. This was a story of will. Yeah, they'll face the 49ers next week at Candlestick. There's a guy who hung in there, Jim Everett. They were really knocking him around all day, and he stood in there and hung in there and got the big play at the end. So the final score is the Rams 19, the Giants 13. Stay tuned for the NFL Today's postgame show coming up next. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. The NFL Today post-game show is sponsored by Miller Lite. America's favorite light beer brings you the Miller Lite All-Star Super Bowl game. All right, so a dramatic ending here in the Meadowlands, and obviously the play you want to see. Was it or wasn't it pass interference? I'm going to bring in Dick Butkus now and get his interpretation as to what you felt about it, Dick. Well, it's strictly a judgment call. Now, here you go, but... It looks like he was on, on him on his back a little bit. And, of course, White is there arguing about it. The back judge there is calling it. But I think a question of it is whether or not he could have caught the ball. I don't know if that enters the play. It was a judgment call. And, whether uh, or not it was a catchable ball. Right. That, of course, also would be the official. It was a tough call to make in that particular situation. Obviously, if it was interference in the first quarter, it had to also be interference in overtime. But still, I think it's in that marginal area. But then after that, who can dispute what Jim Everett did here? Because Dickey was able to really light up the Giants. Well, he got plenty of time this time, and he was able just to check the guy out and threw it, lofted a nice pass downfield, and was able to hit his receiver. Now, remember that one of these passes to Anderson, a sensational interception by Collins, who took it away from him. This time, Flipper got about a yard in front of him and was able to maintain that distance and took it on in. And now let's check in with Irv Cross in the winner's locker room. Irv? Well, as you can expect, Brent, the, the winners are very happy, but Coach Robinson uh, is sort of taking all this in the stride. Well, we got some more work to do. Uh, you know, it's a... I really think our defense did it. We couldn't stop them. You know, I mean, they knocked us off the football, and we had to play their kind of a football game basically throughout. We hung in there and hung in there and got a chance to start moving the ball in the fourth quarter. We thought we could. You know, we thought we might have to play this kind of game. We did, and Jim made some great plays. Well, we'll talk to Jim in a second, Coach. But, you know, in the first half, it looked as though that uh, giant defense is playing, again, their typical style of football, and you had to do something about Lawrence Taylor. In the second half, it seemed like you solved part of their problem. Yeah, Irv Fanky did a great job against him. You know, he got two sacks, but that means 30 times or 40 times Irv Fanky got him, you know. So Lawrence Taylor is one of the great players, and, and, and we, a lot of credit has to go to Irv Fanky. But we hung in there. I think our defense hung in all day. I think they were on the ropes the whole damn time. We called it a, a rope a dope half first half. We were on the ropes the whole time. <laughs> Coach, but well, congratulations. And we're going to see you in San Francisco yes, next week. Yes. And of course, somebody else will see you in San Francisco because his quarterback, Jim Everett. Jim, of course, the big pass just before halftime, betting Flipper Anderson down there for the touchdown, I guess, really got you started, huh? Well, it, it did. You know, and Flipper came out and it made a great play and cut it but the whole thing is is you know the, the turnover and everything allowed us to have it this team won the ball game or this team won the game and i'm so excited heck i don't even know what to say <laughs> well wait a minute. i got somebody else who wants to talk to you brent do you have somebody out in san francisco who wants to talk to jim everett Sure do, Irv, and uh, we're going to bring in Ronnie Lott live from the victorious San Francisco 49ers. Ronnie, we should tell you that no surprise, you've been installed as a favorite in the NFC Championship game by seven and one-half points. Ronnie, I want to involve you in the controversy here. You've been a defensive back, a great one for a number of years. Was it, in your estimation, pass interference by White on this throw by Jim Everett? You tell me what your thoughts are. Well, I tell you, and in that position, you, know, you just hope that the referee can see, can look at the ball. I think the referee's main focus is looking at the defensive back. And at that time, I don't know if that was a catchable ball, but it's hard for a referee to look at both the ball and also the defender. And I think he was looking at the defender on his back a little bit. So it's really a, a tough call there. Yeah, so Ronnie, uh, you're not so sure it was a catchable ball either then? No, uh, I don't know. Um, that, that It didn't look like it was a catchable ball. Okay. Ronnie, we want to bring in Jim Everett with you right now, if we can. And, uh, Ronnie, do you have some questions for the victorious Ram quarterback that you'd like to ask him right now? 
Well, uh, first thing I want to know, well, we ate sushi together. We've um, played each other twice. <clears throat> Excuse me, we played each other twice. And uh, what are you guys going to do this week? What are you going to do this time? I don't know. Hopefully we can mix it up again, Ronnie. Uh, that was, uh, um, you know, the the times we've played it's been tough games and you're the best in the business so you know hopefully you can mix it up just a little bit so we can at least hang in there with you guys well i tell you jim uh, you do a great job of mixing the ball to all your receivers and uh, i know we got our work cut out for us but we're going to try to do what we can um, and try to stop you <laughs> I, ronnie i know you i know uh, i know you will you uh, again you know i'm not going to sit here and bs i'm so happy about getting this win have a chance to play you uh, but uh, you know we'll have a chance to sit down and see what's going on but you know, at least we have the opportunity to play the best in the business. That's true. Uh, uh, good luck to you guys. Thanks, Ronnie. And listen, good luck to both of you. Ronnie Lott and Jim Everett, two great players for the respective teams who will meet up next Sunday in Candlestick Park in what should be a great game. Two teams that know each other so very well. They have split two games. Remember, the Rams went into Candlestick and won by a point, 13-12, and held the 49ers to four field goals. Then down in Anaheim, remember those short passes Joe Montana was throwing to John Taylor that night? And, of course, the 49ers came away with a big come-from-behind win in that one. We'll continue with the post-game show for the Meadowlands on CBS in just a moment. In overtime, it's the Rams, and coming up as soon as we conclude our post-game show, college basketball on CBS, UCLA, and Louisville. Well, Flipper Anderson becomes the receiver of the moment right now. We're going to find out what he felt, was he interfered with or not, and then his winning touchdown reception. Let's send you back to Irv Cross. Irv? Well, we'll start with that first question then, Brent. Uh, were you interfered with or not on the big controversial play in the, in the, in the overtime? Yeah, I thought I was. Um, it was a post pattern, and I came across the middle, and Jim laid it up there, and as soon as I reached for it, um, I felt the little mm -hmm. hand uh, right, grab me right here, there. It was right there, Flipper. Yeah. You, you felt pressure on I your back? I felt pressure, yeah. I, I felt it was P.I. Right there, I was complaining, but you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also had some complaints when you came into the locker room. You had a sore jaw. What happened? Oh, uh, Aaron came in running full speed. I didn't stay out there to celebrate. It was no need. He came in here, and he, he rushed me, and he tackled me. Actually, I didn't have my pads on he hurt my jaw <laughs> well the Giants tried to take the wide receivers out of the game today by running a double zone now you caught a pass just at halftime for a big play and then later of course in overtime caught another big touchdown pass oh yeah they, they're playing the two deep zone and um the corners were coming up bumping the safeties were playing back real deep and the first one it was just a big hole right there and on the last one they tried to bump and um Jim threw the fade and was there for the touchdown all right flipper thanks a lot Thank congratulations you. see you in San Francisco oh, yeah. Brent all right, Irv, I want to update one story, that when the New York Giant assistant coaches came downstairs in the elevator and got in front of the officials' locker room, they were berating the officials over the call. Now, Bill Parcells obviously was angry on the sideline after he heard from upstairs. Let's go back inside to Will McDonough to hear from the Giant coach. Will? Bill, did you have the opportunity to see the play, and what did you think of the call? Well... You know, this game is uh, one that's decided sometimes by things like that. and uh, I'm just proud of my guys. They played their hearts out. They gave me everything I asked for all year. And, uh, and uh, I'm very sorry uh, that we had to lose this way. But we did, and I wish the Rams well. And I hope they can uh, take it from here. Yeah. Uh, John Robinson said that it was the kind of game where you guys seem to be playing Giants football, but then at the end it just got away with you and away from you with one play. Well, you know, uh, I think it's more than one play, but uh, like I said, I'm proud of the way our guys played. They played hard, and uh, it's just tough right now, Will. Well, Phil, thanks very much. I know it's a tough time for you. Brent, let's go back to you. Yeah, Will, exactly. Such a tough time. It is so emotional. I know John Madden has described that feeling during a game that is so